The Practice of Public Relations, 13th edition. Chapter 1, Defining Public Relations. Part 1, Evolution. Learning Objectives. The learning objectives of this chapter include 1.1, to define the practice of public relations and underscore its importance as a valuable and powerful societal force in the 21st century. 1.2, to explore the various publics of public relations as well as the field's most prominent functions. 1.3, to underscore the ethical nature of the field and to reject the notion that public relations practitioners are employed in the practice of spin. And 1.4, to examine the requisites, both technical and attitudinal, that constitute an effective public relations professional. Opening example, public relations terrorists. The Islamic State, aka ISIS or ISIL, used public relations techniques. ISIS is one of the organizations that uses public relations on a daily basis. Even though the group lacked weapons, air power, or an established military, it was able to grow its stature as terrorists using public relations techniques. They used an aggressive social media campaign. They issued statements about conquests and major battles. They staged elaborate events like weapons parades, and they used high quality videos of torture and prisoner beheadings. Learning Objective 1.1, to define the practice of public relations and underscore its importance as a valuable and powerful societal force in the 21st century. In the 21st century, few societal forces are more powerful than the practice of public relations, especially when combined with social media, which is a new addition to the practice, relatively new. So, social media and public relations have revolutionized the way organizations and individuals communicate with their publics. What is Public Relations? Public Relations Society of America defines public relations as a strategic communications process that builds mutually beneficial relationships between an organization and their publics. PRSA asked 200,000 plus people in the United States and the thousands of others overseas who practice public relations to arrive at this definition. The CEO of PRSA admitted, like beauty, the definition of public relations is in the eye of the beholder. What is public relation, why is public relations so important today? Society is overwhelmed by communications. The public is bombarded with nonstop messages of every variety. Communications come from traditional communications, like newspapers, magazines, talk radio, cable and broadcast television, but they also come from non-traditional and social media in today's busy media marketplace. The challenge for a communicator is to cut through the clutter. Communicators must deliver persuasive, believable, and actionable arguments. The power, value, and influence of the practice of public relations is more profound in this context. Prominence of public relations. Public relations is a multi-billion dollar business in the United States. Today, the practice of public relations is a growth industry. An additional 27,400 public relations jobs will need to be filled between 2012 and 2022, which is good for people like me. The income gap between public relations specialists and journalists is growing, which has increased enrollment in undergraduate and graduate public relations programs. A lot of my friends who used to work on the media side have come over to the PR side. The top 10 independent public relations agencies in the United States record annual revenues in excess of a billion dollars. International Public Relations Association has strong membership in 80 plus countries. 250 US colleges and universities offer public relations as a sequence or degree. Enrollments in undergraduate public relations programs are growing and the US government has thousands of communications professionals. What is public relations? Slide two of three. Here's a reminder of PRSA's 2012 definition. Public relations is a strategic communication process that builds mutually beneficial relationships between organizations and their publics. Another definition is CITELS. Public relations is a planned process to influence public opinion through sound character and proper performance based on mutually satisfactory two-way communication. The difference with the author's definition relative to the PRSA definition is it adds the elements of planning, which is important in sound public relations practice. 
listening through two-way communications, and the elements of character, ethics, and performance. Public relations is most effective when it is based on ethical principles and proper action. Without character and performance, achieving sustained influence might be transitory or impossible. You can't pour perfume on a skunk. Ethical principles are very important in the practice of public relations. You can't fool. You can fool some of the people some of the time, but not all of the people all of the time. I'm sure many of us heard our parents or other people say that as we were growing up. The reason it is important to base public relations on ethical principles and proper action is you want to have sustained influence and you want people to continue to respect and believe you. The Foundation for Public Relations Research and Education Definition. This is a long one. Public relations is a distinctive management function which helps establish and maintain mutual lines of communications, understanding, acceptance, and cooperation between an organization and its publics. It involves the management of problems or issues, helps management to keep informed on and responsive to public opinion, defines and emphasizes the responsibility of management to serve the public interest, helps management keep abreast of an effective, effectively and effectively utilize change, serving as an early warning system to help anticipate trends, and uses research and sound and ethical communication techniques as its principal tools. There were 65 public relations leaders who participated in a study by the Foundation for Public Relations Research and Education. This study yielded this 88-word sentence in 1975. What is public relations? Slide three of the three. Research, planning, communications, dialogue, and evaluation are all essential in the practice of public relations. John Marston's four-step model to influence public opinion includes research, research attitudes about the issue at hand, identify action of the client in the public interest, communicate that action to gain understanding, acceptance, and support, and evaluate the communication to see if the opinion has been influenced. Action, communication, and evaluation. So, race. Research, action, communication, evaluation. The key to the process is the second step, action. That's why it's in bold. You can't have effective communication or positive publicity without proper action. Should PR equal performance recognition? A different PR than public relations. Performance must precede publicity. Act first and communicate later. Positive action communicated straightforwardly will yield, will yield positive results. Action is the key to the process of influencing public opinion. You must act first and communicate later. Planned process to influence public opinion. Marston's race, research, action, communication, and evaluation. Crefasi's ROSIE, R-O-S-I-E, research objectives, strategies, implementation, and evaluation. RPIE, research planning, implementation, and evaluation. What do the models have in common? How do they differ? Sheila Klau Crefasi proposed extending the RACE formula into the five part ROSI to encompass a more managerial approach to the field. ROSI prescribes sandwiching the functions of objectives, strategies, and implementation between research and evaluation, setting clear objectives, working from strategies, and implementing a predetermined Plan are keys to sound public relations practice. RPIE emphasizes the element of planning as a necessary step preceding activation of a communications narrative. Here is a widely repeated definition. Public relations is the management function which evaluates public attitudes, identifies the policies and procedures of an individual or an organization with the public interest, and plans and executes a program of action to earn public understanding and acceptance. The key words in this definition are management and action. Public relations should report to top management and serve as an honest broker to management unimpeded by any other group. For public relations to work, the advice must be unfiltered, uncensored, and unexpurgated. It is important for public relations to report to top management. Advice to top management should not be filtered through another layer. Unfortunately, public relations departments often report to marketing, advertising, or legal departments. Appropriate action is required. No amount of communications can save an organization with substandard performance. No amount of communicating or backtracking or post facto posturing will change the reality. 
The idea is to harmonize internal and external relationships so that the organization can enjoy the goodwill of its public, stability, and a long life. Planned process to influence public opinion. Sharp's five principles include honest communication, openness and consistency of action, fairness of actions, continuous two-way communication, environmental research and evaluation. Jenny's description, the management of communications between an organization and its publics. A question of ethics. So here's a case where Ketchum agreed to represent Russia and Vladimir Putin. Ketchum helped Putin be selected as Time Magazine's Person of the Year. Ketchum was paid $23 million in, dollars in fees and expenses on the Russia, Russian account. Questions were raised about human rights invasions of neighboring countries. Ever since Vladimir Putin became president of Russia in 2000, he has been critical of U.S. imperialism while pushing the boundaries of Russia's power. So some people wondered whether it was the right thing to do when Ketchum, a well-respected public relations agency, agreed to represent Russia and its president to influence public opinion. Critics of the Russian government began turning up dead. In 2008, Russia fueled a war with the Republic of Georgia, a former USSR state. In 2013, Putin criticized the notion of American exceptionalism. In 2014, Russian-backed troops began a civil war in the Ukraine. Ketchum cut its staff and kept a low profile. Some public relations professionals argue that representing a controversial nation is like representing a company that sells arms or cigarettes. Ketchum defended the relationship, saying the role to facilitate communication could only help. I was once asked on a job interview if I would ever represent a tobacco company. My answer was no, and I got the job. They were looking for someone with a strong sense of ethics. A question of ethics continued. Do you think a public relations agency should represent a nation that holds views contrary to the United States? Why or why not? Should Ketchum have resigned the Russian account after the 2004 uh, sorry, 2014 invasion of Ukraine? Why or why not? Where should a public relations agency draw the line in representing controversial clients? The questions for your personal opinions about these topics are just ones to reflect upon. Um, you can use your own ethical lens and respond to these questions. We may discuss some of these ethical issues on the discussion boards. Public relations as management interpreter. Every organization has public relations. Public relations professionals interpret philosophies, policies, programs, practices of management to the public. They convey attitudes of public management. They counsel management, advise management, and recommend action. The trick is to establish good public relations. Before public relations professionals can gain attention, understanding, acceptance, and ultimately action from target publics, they have to know what management is thinking. Good public relations cannot be practiced in a vacuum. The public relations department is only as good as its access to management. Public relations as public interpreter. Learn about what public really thinks. Let management know. Examples include GM's Corvair and Ralph Nader, mobile oil in the 1970s, and Hurricane Katrina. The examples are times when powerful institutions and their publics, public relations departments failed to anticipate the true sentiments of the public. General Motors paid little attention to Ralph Nader when he spread the message that GM's Corvair was unsafe. When people believed him, they had to discontinue the Corvair at great expense. When gasoline prices and oil companies' profits rose rapidly in the 1970s, Mobile Oil ignored criticism and used excess cash to purchase the parent of the Montgomery Ward department store chain. It resulted in public outcry. While George W. Bush earned great credit for strong actions and communications following the September 11, 2001 attacks, his public relations faltered when the weapons of mass destruction were not in Iraq. His credibility was further damaged when he failed to act promptly and communicate frankly about Hurricane Katrina. 
Okay, now it's your turn. Can you think of a recent case in which an organization was not correctly interpreting public views? What were the consequences? I feel like nowadays everyone is, all organizations and people that are in the public eye are under scrutiny and under a microscope, especially with the advent of social media and the web. Information is available in great amounts uh, on a very timely basis, so people are always in the in under public scrutiny. These are cons there are cons constant struggles as companies try to interpret their actions to the public. Rapid communication to explain action remains critical. The savviest individuals and institutions understand the importance of effectively interpreting their philosophies, policies, and practices to the public and interpreting back to management how the public views them and their organization. So some of the ways to do that is through talking to people um, and one of the ways to get public sentiment is through social media. Learning Objective 1.2 to explore the various publics of public relations as well as the field's most prominent functions. Interpreting a sensitive sexual issue. Approximately 17 million viewers in May 2015 tuned in to see Bruce Jenner tell Diane Sawyer about his journey to become a woman. Do you think it was a wise idea for Bruce Jenner to choose ABC TV for his announcement? What other options might have suggest might you have suggested in announcing that he was transgender? Bruce Jenner was criticized for maximizing his publicity of what should have been a private decision, or what some people felt should have been a private decision. Jenner also agreed to be the subject of a reality show following his transition. Others commended him for bringing national attention to the transgender issue. The Publics of Public Relations. And here is figure 1.3 with key publics. Practitioners must communicate with many different publics, not just the general public, each having its own special needs and requiring different types of communication. The lines that divide publics are thin and the potential overlap is significant. Priorities according to organizational needs must always be reconciled. A public arises when a group of people faces a similar indeterminate situation, recognizes that it is indeterminate and problematic in that situation, organizes to do something about the problem. A time-honored definition states that this is when a public, arise, a public group arises. In public relations more specifically, a public is a group of people with a stake in an issue, organization, or an idea. Publics can be classified into overlapping categories, internal and external, primary, secondary, and marginal, traditional and future, proponents, opponents, and uncommitted. Internal and external publics are inside the organization, such as supervisors, clerks, managers, stockholders, and the board of directors. External publics are those not directly connected with the organization, like the press, government, educators, customers, suppliers, and the community. Primary publics can most help or hinder an organization's efforts. Secondary publics are less important and marginal publics are the least impo important of all. Employees and current customers are traditional publics. Students are potential customers or future ones. An institution must deal differently with those who support it and those who oppose it. Learning Objective 1.2 Discussion Question if you were the public relations director of the local United Way, whom would you consider your most important publics to be? So consider the following overlapping categories, like we discussed on the last slide, internal and external, primary, secondary, and marginal, traditional and future, and proponents, opponents, and uncommitted. The functions of public relations include many functions, as you can see on this slide. They include writing, media relations, social media interface, planning, counseling, researching, publicity, marketing communications, community relations, consumer relations, employee relations, government affairs, investor relations, special public relations, 
public affairs and issues, crisis communications. There's a fundamental difference between the functions of public relations and the functions of marketing and advertising. Marketing and advertising promote a product or a service. Public relations promotes an entire organization. Modern public relations is all about managing relationships, crafting strategic stories, conveying expertise, and solving organizational problems through strategic communications. Learning Objective 1.3 to underscore the ethical nature of the field and to reject the notion that public relations practitioners are employed in the practice of spin. Some people worry about the power of public relations to exercise thought control over the American public. Spin signifies the distinctive interpretation of an issue or action to sway public opinion, as in putting a positive slant on a negative story. Spin does not equal public relations. In a mild case, a public relations professional will interpret an issue to sway public opinion, as in putting a positive slant on a negative story. A virulent example is confusing, distorting, or obfuscating the issue or lying. It's antithetical to proper practice of public relations, and the public relations cardinal rule never ever lie. In the most virulent form, spin means confusing an issue or distorting or even lying. The, pro the propensity in recent years for presumably respected public relations figures to lie in an attempt to deceive the public has led to the notion that spinning the facts is synonymous with public relations practice. It isn't. Once you lie in public relations, you will never be trusted again. Learning Objective 1.3, Discussion Question. How do professional public relations people regard the aspect of spin as part of what they do? Public relations are often blamed for the existence of spin. Faced with this era of spin and continued public uncertainty about the ethics of public relations, practitioners must always be sensitive to and considerate of how their actions and their words will influence the public. Learning Objective 1.4 to examine the requisites, both technical and attitudinal, that constitute an effective public relations professional. Seven areas of successful PR career. Diversity of experience, performance, communication skills, relationship building, proactive, proactivity and, and passion, teamliness, intangibles such as personality, likability, and chemistry. A 2004 study of agency, corporate, and nonprofit public relations leaders reported these seven areas which characterize a successful public relations career. Desired technical skills include knowledge of the field, communications knowledge, technical knowledge, current events knowledge, business knowledge, and management knowledge. One should have knowledge of the underpinnings of public relations, what it is, what it does, what it ought to stand for, communications knowledge, includes the media and the ways in which they work, communications research and how to write. Technical knowledge includes familiarity with computers and associated technologies, as well as the World Wide Web, are imperative. Current events knowledge, knowledge of what's going on around you, daily factors that influence society. That's absolutely key in being a good PR person because you need to advise management on how to respond to current events. Business knowledge, how business works, a bottom line orientation, and knowledge of your company and industry. Management knowledge, how senior managers make decisions, how public policy is shaped, and what pressures and responsibilities fall on managers. Desired attitudinal requisites. Pro communications, advocacy, counseling orientation, ethics, willingness to take risks, and a positive outlook. Pro-communications is a bias toward disclosing rather than withholding information. They should practice the belief that the public has the right to know. Advocacy. Public relations people must believe in their employers, be advocates for their employers, and stand up for what their employers represent. I've always been happy that I landed in academia because I believe in what I am promoting. Counseling orientation, they should have a compelling desire to advise senior managers. They must have the gumption to say no and to disagree with management. Ethics, very important in the practice of public relations. 
The counsel that public relations professionals deliver must always be ethical. The mantra of the public relations professional must be to do the right thing. Willingness to take risks. You must be willing to stick your neck out, stand up for what you believe in, and take risks. And a positive outlook is occasionally frustrating, but you need to keep on smiling. Learning Objective 1.4 Discussion Question. What are the technical and attitudinal requisites most important for public relations success? Reflect on the content from the previous two slides and form a, re a response for yourself to this discussion question. Case study, the new CEO's trial by Switchgate Fire. G GM's new CEO at the start of 2014, Mary Barra, faced a Switchgate challenge early in her tenure and responded to the public relations challenge as follows. She responded with fixing the problem, getting the bad news out, finding out why it had happened, and what happened, bridling the lawyers, and being visible and human. How would you assess the way CEO Barra handled the Switchgate crisis? Do you agree with her decision to let GM's outside lawyers lead the internal investigation? I think that's probably a good thing because an internal investigation can be biased. What was the public relations benefit of hiring Kenneth Feinberg to supervise the claims process? There are more t details about this in your text, of course. What recommendations would you make for GM's public relations process going forward? So that concludes the chapter one presentation. There will be more discussion um, of some of the questions we've covered in this presentation on the discussion boards. I encourage you to read the chapter in its entirety as questions from the text will appear on your weekly quiz.